Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, it's a kind of fox shooting, but not as we know it. We're in Africa, where it's the night and the day of the jackal. Mark Gilchrist has taken his gun to Ireland, where the crows are piling in. First, it's the start of National Shooting Week, and to promote it, the Countryside Alliance has taken a load of urban kids to a playground in Kent. A school trip to Kent usually means Chatham Dockyard or Leeds Castle, but for these inner-city London children, it's West Kent Shooting School. They're here as part of the Countryside Alliance's National Shooting Week to learn all about a sport that requires skill, coordination and discipline, all qualities that should be impressed on children of any age. Oh yes, they're going to learn it's fun too. It's just an exciting experience for them to, to try the sport. And it's Olympic sport now, shooting, and it's a good opportunity to to get them something they've not done before. None of the children here today have, have done the shooting before, so yeah, they're really looking forward to it. How do you sell it to their parents? Um, good question. Um, it's, it's just an opportunity to, to, to try a, a different sport that they've not done before. Um, and parents were sort of willing for them to come, they thought it was a good idea. The Durham Academy is not one of those schools you hear about on the news. It's a good place to learn. Ofsted class it as outstanding, but their knowledge of what they're doing today is not so hot. Shania said that I was going to be laser tag and I thought no. <laughs> I thought it wasn't okay. going to be years of tag. Have a quick look. Oh, what do you think? Quick yes, look. but I'll... <laughs> okay. First of all, it it's like the intros the and safety and briefing followed by a I quick explanation bang. of what makes the cartridge go bang. Then a willing volunteer puts a shell through the gun to see where the shot goes. Good. Now you... Okay, well done. What a shot, you hit it! It's the first of hundreds that will be fired today, bringing many smiles to many faces. Your target now. <laughs> when they first came here, they were a bit quiet. I think they were a little bit nervous. And then as soon as they, uh, they, they set fire to some, uh, some powder there and they got very excited, they saw a big flame. And I can see they all got very interested at that point. Then they got to shoot a pattern plate. They were all very excited. Then they heard the first bang. But now they've all had to have a go. They're all engrossed, they're all trying to beat each other, they're all very competitive and uh, they're really enjoying it. Smiles everywhere. There is no doubt the 10-year-olds are having a ball, but they are from London and have never been exposed to anything like this in their lives before. So what do they make of it? And most importantly, would they do it again? What's been the best bit? Um, getting five out of five. No way. Yeah. It's cool, really good. It goes back on your shoulder, but it doesn't hurt as much as you think it would. And what's it feel like to actually hit one? Uh, awesome. I, I never knew it was going to be um, real guns. I thought it was just going to be like pellet guns. If you're going to tell your friends or your, or your family about the day, well, how would you describe it? Fantastic. Um, surreal. Would you come back and do this again? Of course. Lead forward. That's it. Now put your head down on the wood. West Kent has put on a great day. The instructors here have been patient and enthusiastic and that has transferred to the children. All of them have experienced the satisfaction of seeing that clay go pop and some have shown some natural flair. The Countryside Alliance is not expecting to find the next shooting superstar today. It just wants to make sure that these children come away thinking positive thoughts about our sport. National Shooting Week is from the 2nd to the 10th of June 2012. To take part in an event over this half term, simply visit www.nationalshootingweek.co.uk, find your nearest ground via a postcode search and book your lesson. Now from one bunch of enthusiastic amateurs to another, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. An information panel on Birmingham's gun quarter has been unveiled by Birmingham City Council, next to the gunmaker's arms on Little Shadwell Street. This follows a worldwide campaign to save the name of the gun quarter. Sadly, Tony Treadwell, who led the campaign, passed away from cancer aged 45 on Easter Saturday. The campaign will be continued by representatives of the Birmingham gun trade with support of Basque. George Digweed has claimed yet another international title. He won the European Compact in a dramatic sudden death shoot-off 
against local hero Andras Zodarelli in Budapest. George and Andras both finished the tournament scoring 198 out of 200, but George kept his cool in the shoot-off to secure his 15th European title. He told Fieldsports Channel News it was even more satisfying known he'd shown 007 just who was boss. The Lord of the Manor of Preston Patrick of Westmoreland has reasserted his 200-year-old right to hunt throughout the village in a letter to local residents. Henry Armitage owns deeds of enfranchisement dating back to 1773, but a law passed by the Labour government in 2002 voids any of these traditional rights unless they're claimed by October 2013. The Daily Mail newspaper found just one angry resident who opposes Mr Armitage. A shooter from New Zealand has shot the country's oldest duck. While kayaking on the Katuna River, Brian Rogers bagged a bird with a ring on it dating back from 2002. The local fish and game department says it's pleased to see shooters like Brian getting the most from their game bird licences. And finally, a Dutch artist has taken taxidermy to a new level. After his cat Orville was killed by a car, Bart Janssen from the Netherlands stuffed it and turned it into a helicopter as part of an art exhibition in Amsterdam. Bart says now he is finally flying with the birds, the greatest goal a cat could ever reach. And for all the horrified aunties, he adds, for the cat lovers, it's tanned hide, just like your shoes. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, one of the great predators of news there. And talking of predators, it's always struck us how similar fox shooting in the UK is to coyote hunting in America is to our next subject, jackal in Africa. No, we haven't discovered the elephant's graveyard. It is the edge of the charmingly named Death Pit, a hole in the ground where all the surplus bits of carcass unused as either food or trophy by the Blaza Safari Lodge end up. We are hoping that this is the table where the jackals will dine tonight. Is this where you bring your victims? Yeah, this is where all, we, all the leftovers, we so bring them here. So all the, all the, everything you, you don't use from yeah. the, the antelope, you bring them here and you just leave them out and they get taken away? No, away. we've got a hole there back there, okay. a big hole, but what happens is the hyenas and the vultures and the uh, jackal, they go inside and they take it and they pull it to wherever they want to eat it and then they eat it mostly, they put it up here. There's also a tree over there, it's also got some bones underneath. Right, and, ja and jackal control for you is like fox control for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay, so should we go and do something? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Just like at home, the Fox Pro is a popular choice here in Africa, but clearly we are scrolling through a different menu. Carl starts off with a jackal call, but I have a feeling we've arrived here a little late for any action. I'm not getting the same sort of foxing confidence that I get with Roy back home. So we call it a night and deploy Plan B the following evening. There are plenty of takers even though we are weary from a full day's hunting. Somehow the idea of going foxing or jackaling appears to the nostalgic side of Germany-based Blaser Brit Darren Hull and Zeiss's Stefan Buring just wants to be out hunting. Just like with the leopard in the laundry we showed you a couple of weeks ago, Mark is taking us to see something slightly out of the ordinary. We're going to head off to, to the bottom section of the property where uh, my maintenance manager found a dead giraffe. Um, we're just going to have a quick look at it, see if there's any jackal activity around it. And if there is, we might uh, just sit down there for about an hour or two. Maybe we'll have a bit of luck with a jackal. Any idea where the giraffe died? Unfortunately not. We can't see any marks on it. Obviously we didn't find it quick enough. Uh, part of it was, was, was chewed on already, so it's difficult to say. Is it bad news when you lose an animal like that? It's terrible news because I only released those giraffe last year, August, and they're all young animals. They probably three or four years old, so they are very young and it's a pity for us to have lost one and it looks like it's a it's a bull, so it's always a, always a pity. 
the giraffe blocks the whole track. If only this were smell -o vision The pictures in this case only tell part of the story. Definitely looks like a, like a young female because you can see the tuft of hair on top of the horn which the females have. The, the bulls have a bald patch on top and that's how you see the difference just by looking at their heads. And this is a youngster, this thing is two or three years old. I'm not sure, to be quite honest. I really don't know. It's now too, it's too late to see if there's any marks on his neck, on his backside, you know, on his rump or something. You know, a leopard would wouldn't really jump onto a giraffe. It's just too big. But I mean, anything's possible. If you look, it looks like she fell down and she was kicking. You see, the grass is is flat where you're standing, Darren. So yep, yep. She looks like she's doing this yep. with her feet. Over there. Yep. How long would you say she's been here? Probably about four days, three, four days. She could have been kicked in the stomach by another giraffe, yep. and uh, all of a sudden she gets internal bleeding. Yep. Um, you know, it's so difficult to say. Yep. She could. I was just thinking now, she, she could have been pregnant, she could have been, she, she could have had a miscarriage or something went wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's so difficult to say. Unfortunately, the carcass doesn't have any signs of scavengers, which makes Mark think twice about staying here. One possible theory is that the animals are too wary, with the giraffe looking too intact. We found a dead zebra, and when we hung the zebra in the tree for, for, a, for a hyena, we had to cut the head off because the hyenas wouldn't otherwise eat the meat because they know that the zebras can bite them. Once the head was off, then the, the, the hyenas ate it. Wow. So, I don't know if this is the case where, <laughs> where they think, the jackals think it's just lying here because the head's still on. I'm not sure. We head off to glamorous destination number two, the death pit again. You can tell we're getting close. The vultures and marabou stalks give a sense that there's stuff round here that's past its sell-by date. This time we get a better look at the death pit. The smell does take some getting used to. Stuff rots in Africa a bit faster than it does in the UK. Stefan is the man with the blazer rifle tonight, topped off with a perfect foxing, jackaling, coyoteing, or even dingoing scope, the Zeiss Duralit. Mark sets the Fox Pro again, and we make ourselves comfortable behind the death pit. We try and breathe through our mouths as the whiff on the wind keeps us on our toes, but only for so long. As we lose the light, Darren and Mark try and get a different type of wind blowing when they change the call to lion, but their tittering gives them away. No jackal. Next time, Roy is coming with us to show Namibia a few foxy tricks. Well, if you enjoyed that piece about Jackal, why not go and see our friends at The Shooting Show, appearing in the little bit of sky beside me there. They're after Oryx this week. Staying with our show, we're going to Ireland with Mark Gilchrist, where the Corvids are coming in thick and fast. Or should that be tick and quick? Right, this week on Field Sports Britain, I've gone over to Ireland to have a bit of crow shooting and stay with us for a bit longer, because as you can see, we've got a fairly decent day lined up for you.
that. Now I've had a fantastic day over here in the Republic of Ireland. The location's got to be kept a secret, that's part of the deal that uh, the guys struck up when I come over. We picked up about 150 jackdaws, we've got 17 rooks and we've got the grey crows here, which are the equivalent of the carrion crow back in England, but obviously she's grey. We've got another 30 on the roof that we can't get because the roof is too fragile to support my dainty weight, so we've got to leave them up there. That's a good job done, 500 shells, two hours, now we're going to go and see if the Guinness is good in the pub. After a long hard day shooting there's nothing I like more than a few pints, some local food and dive into a local pub. So when I was given the chance to help with the Gages fish night I absolutely jumped to the opportunity. The Gages is a true sportsman's establishment offering guns and their dogs a place to dry off and eat one of their now famous breakfasts, the half choke or the full choke. Basically we set up uh, earlier in the year just to give wildfowlers, shooting people, gun dog men, fishermen, someone to come to, country folks someone to come to so they can kick back, relax, bring a dog in, get a pint, have some crack. Okay, so what have you got that brings people in? Uh, Saturday morning breakfast, usually if you come off the lock you've got the option of a half choke, which is a smaller fry, or a full choke, which is a fry for a man. Right, so what's in a fry for a man? Fry for a man, the full choke, you've got two beef sausages, two pork sausages, Two bits of bacon, two bits of vegetable roll, uh, two bits of soda bread, two bits of potato bread, and two fried eggs. Okay, and it, for those of you who don't know what vegetable roll is, what is it? Vegetable roll, it's uh, something along the lines of sausage meat with onion, herbs, spices in it. It's kind of like a, like a small burger made of pork. So there's not a lot of vegetables in it? There are very few vegetables in it. The vegetables kind of walk past it. <laughs> the fish night is a real hit. After a few pints of Guinness, I throw in a few dishes of my own. If you look around, the punters are really happy. The pike was something I never ever tried before and I, I thought it would be bony and taste muddy, you know what I mean? But it was really brilliant, really well seasoned and really, really tasty. I had the, the cured uh, trout and it was really, really nice. I never had it before, it was delicious, I want more, it was really yummy. I always have a fantastic time in Ireland, whether it's the sport, the food or the crack. The whole thing is pure genius. Now, Father's Day is coming up. Time to get your wife, partner, girlfriend, civil partner, boyfriend into the room with you because we've got a range of DVDs that you could buy from big game to small game, from fowl that fly to fish that swim. It's all there on our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Now, a roundup of what's on YouTube in the world of hunting, shooting, fishing this week. It's Hunting YouTube. It's Hunting YouTube, showing the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. And it's a bumper week for pest control, thanks to everyone who has sent in their favourite films. Shoot More Pigeons has put up a film called Lamping Night Rabbit Shooting with a 2-2. It wins the award for title that most accurately describes what's going on in the film, but you are left a bit bereft in the plot department. Like bad guys in a Bond movie, the rabbits get shot, but unlike with 007, you don't get any sense of who, what, where or why. In the film Jackdaw Shooting, Tweeds and Pheasants is shooting jackdaws over decoys on a grass field next to a cattle shed. Again, it's a bit thin on story. Actually, I just told you the story, but you can't fault the shooting. Stone the Crows, it's Mark Gilchrist. That's the title of James Marchington's latest film, and it's the best film of the week. Mark is up at 4am to protect a Kent farmer's barley from marauding corvids. You find out why, how, and the only question you are left with is who is the nice young lady who is happy to go shooting with Mark at that time in the morning. Hunting FPS is one of the most popular British shooting channels. In slow motion air gun pigeon hunting hash 16 his mission is pigeon pie and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's all in slow motion and shows this channel's usual wit and style. You can see why viewers are so keen to watch his films. For more unusual pigeon shooting we join Sportsman Channel's representative on Earth or YouTube as we now call our planet, that's World Hunting Group. It's Argentina Pigeon Schlock shows slow motion mid-air shots at pigeons with, be amazed, a bow and arrow. Be very amazed. It's a trailer for a film on the US TV network Sportsman Channel, but it is still remarkable. Well, that was all the stuff that's good for you. Now for the fun stuff. Leo Naylor is one of those British Roebuck agents with such good shooting they don't bother selling it to ungrateful Brits. So it is that Dirk Voltman of 
the German hunting magazine, Pirsch is out with him on his ground in Somerset. Watch this film, okay, it's partly in German and is a bit heavy on these still shots, but give it time, and it has better music than our programmes. To Yorkshire, where UK01 Edmund has put up a film of the latest inter-pub shoot. It is week five. Goodness knows if you had sat through weeks one to four of the first minute of this, you'd think about turning the gun on yourself, but then it gets better with some proper northern banter. So hold out. And finally, it's an old one, but a good one for anyone who wants a cautionary tale about muzzle awareness. In your opinion, does this man deserve to be lucky? Doesn't a small part of you wonder whether or not Darwin should have been proven right here and the bloke remove himself from our collective gene pool, but he gets away with it. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop in to the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. We are back next week and once again you can click on the speech bubble that's appearing just beside me exhorting you to subscribe or even on the subscribe button which I think is now permanently up there at the top of the screen on YouTube. Or you can go to our website where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down to the bottom where there's a constant contact box, pop your email address into that and we will send you our free weekly newsletter about what's on the show. Good for us. This has been Field Sports Britain. Don't forget about those DVDs.